The movie begins with Private Shane Gulliver of the 1st Battalion, Northdale Rifles marching to a court-martial. The film then cuts back to August, 2003, where Gulliver arrives in Basra, Iraq with fellow soldier Mark Tate, nicknamed Treacle. Three months after the invasion, British troops are charged with keeping the peace in Basra. Once there, they are briefed by their commanding officer, Major Godber, who tells them to treat the people of Iraq with respect and that they are here to ensure they do what they can so they can enjoy their new freedom. Lastly, he warns the troops that anyone who needlessly kills or mistreats in this occupation will have the mark of Cain upon them. The next scene shows civilians of Basra creating a commotion because of the lack of petrol. Corporal Gant tries calming them down, but the crowd gets even more furious. Eventually, they begin throwing rocks at the soldiers and Gant fires a warning shot to stop them. Yet the civilians persist in their actions, soon after severely injuring a soldier. Afterward, Gant orders some of his men to pour the petrol on the ground, which causes the crowd to quiet down and leave. After that, Gant, Gulliver, and Lance Corporal Queeley are lying down, having fun with Gulliver taking some pictures. Shortly after, Tate joins them, and when Gant makes a joke about Queeley, Tate laughs at him, angering Queeley, so he gets up and suffocates him until Gant orders him to stop. Tate always gets bullied by guys like Queeley because he's the weakest one. After Queeley leaves, Gant tells Tate not to piss him off but lets him know that he can come to him if Queeley gets at him for no reason. Major Godber gathers some of the soldiers to inform them about the IEDs, coming in all shapes and sizes, and says it could even be in the soda can he's holding. While on patrol, Gulliver and Tate hear some kids chanting Manchester United and make fun of them. Shortly after, Tate notices a soda can in the distance, much like the one from their commanding officer earlier, and informs everyone. So, they take cover and wait for the civilians to clear out before advancing. Once the streets are clear, Gant walks toward the can slowly and picks it up, finding nothing. Later, the troops are called up to a location where some civilians are beating up one of their own. The translator explains to Gant that the man is a petrol smuggler, and they caught him while smuggling some back to his place. One of the civilians steps out and demands they get justice, saying the soldiers should shoot the smuggler, or the civilians will start a riot. Despite the translator continuously warning him, Gant orders for the smuggler to be arrested. So, the soldiers hold up their shields while they take the prisoner away into the truck. Gant calls up Tate, Gulliver, and Queeley to inform them about the riot situation. He suggests they give what the crowd want, which is to beat the shit out of the smuggler by going in the truck one by one. Then Queeley tells Tate to go first, who is hesitant about their actions but later agrees when Queeley mentioned him acting like a pussy. And so, they all do one by one, and some time later, drag the man out to the streets. Later that night, Gulliver reveals to Tate that he didn't beat up the smuggler, he instead gave him some water and shouted at him to make it look like he was hurting him. Gulliver thinks that beating up someone with their hands tied behind their back isn't neutralizing a coalition force, but being a nasty piece of work. He then pleased Tate not to tell anyone about it. The next day, while on another patrol, Tate recognizes a roadblock and a civilian holding a handgun. The civilians run away, and as the troops are approaching, they are suddenly ambushed by insurgents. The soldiers quickly run behind cover and prepare for a counterattack, but one of them gets shot in the hand. More insurgents appear with one of them holding an RPG. Meanwhile, one private is struck with shock and sits in a Land Rover, incapable of taking cover. Their commanding officers orders the private to come out of the wagon, but the soldier refuses. So, he runs toward the wagon and tries forcing him out of the wagon while an insurgent is loading up the RPG. Unfortunately, the commanding officer couldn't get the private out to cover in time and the insurgent fires the RPG, blowing up the vehicle with along with it. Troops are in distraught witnessing the death of Mayor Godber. Gant calms Gulliver down to focus his attention toward the enemy, and so does Quile Tatati, who begins shooting furiously at the enemy. They hold a ceremony for Major Godber's funeral and transport him back to his family. That night, Quile informs the soldiers that those insurgents are actual civilians, stating that every civilian has got an RPG wrapped inside their place. The next morning, Major Rod Gilchrist informs the other commanding officers they have intelligence that the insurgents involved in the attack come from one village in particular. So, he tells them they should make that community understand that they will not tolerate their actions. He then gives orders to search and detain them rigorously, making sure they get the message. Afterward, the order is followed down to the troops. Gant rages up his troops to find those insurgents and make them pay. When the troops arrive in the said village, one young civilian attempts to escape, but is immediately caught. The young man tries to explain his innocence, but Tate finds handguns inside, leading to them suspect that he's one of the insurgents. 
The boy's parents begin arguing with the soldiers, but to no avail. Gant orders the troops to take the boy into the wagon. They also arrest several men suspected of being insurgents to take them back to their base. Before they leave, Gulliver shoots and kills a dog who kept barking at him, stating that it was going to attack him when asked why he did it by Gant. Arriving at the base, the suspects are seen with their heads covered and kneeling down against a wall. The troops are told to leave the prisoners to the Royal Military Police, but they begin complaining to Gant as they lost two of their comrades in the insurgents' hands. But Gant reminds them that it's not their job to interrogate them, but are only ordered to hand them over to the RMP in same condition that they arrested them in. But all that Gant said seems to be an act because he is as pissed as his men and wants to get revenge. Gant only reveals this to his most trusted men. He says that they have six murderers 50 yards away and cannot simply sit still. Gant leaves the camp enraged, heading for the prisoners and soon his men follow. Gulliver and Tate are left back because Tate refuses to go, saying he doesn't see the point. Gulliver follows him out and confronts him, warning him that if he doesn't join them, no one will trust him again no one will watch his back and will end up dead on his next patrol. Major Gilchrist finds them arguing and asks if their feelings are running high, which Gulliver confirms. Despite knowing what is about to transpire, the Major doesn't try stopping it. Tate then agrees to join and the two head into the prison sector, with Gant appreciating their arrival. And so, due to their anger over the death of their comrades, they begin to beat, torture, and sexually abuse the insurgents. During the torture, Gulliver takes some photographs. The next day, Tate goes over to a pastor soldier to get consultancy about the previous night's incident, but doesn't get the answers he needs, so he leaves angered. Later that day, Gant is explaining to the boy's family that the prisoner attempted an escape and therefore sustained some injuries to cover up the beating. He assures them he's in a British military hospital receiving treatment. Shortly after, Gilchrist calls Gant into his office and informs him that he's authorized to make a donation to the family. He instructs him to take a translator and go down to the hospital to have the family sign a waiver while making sure that the donation is not compensation. After exacting their revenge, we see the soldiers arriving home with their respective families welcoming them at the train station. Tate has his mother and sister picking him up while Gulliver is with his father and his girlfriend, Shelley. They resume their normal lives, during which Gulliver shows his girlfriend the group pictures with his comrades, along with ones of the torture. That night, Tate and Gulliver go out to a nightclub with Shelley tagging along. While Gulliver is having fun telling stories about his time in Basra to his friends, Shelley seems bored so she goes and asks him, take her home. Gulliver, though, wants to stay and tells her to go by herself, which pisses her off so she splashes her drink in his face before leaving. He follows her outside to explain but the situation deteriorates when Gulliver calls her jealous because he's changed and kind of popular now. Gulliver then goes back and starts talking to another woman. On the other side, Tate isn't having a fun time as the sounds from the music along with the lights remind him of the war and he quickly rushes outside. Meanwhile, Gulliver and the new girl seem to have gotten very close as he's hugging and kissing her. Shortly after, the two make out in a dark alley. Tide is having flashbacks of the torture and is unable to sleep. Early the next morning, Shelley is outside Gulliver's house waiting for him when he arrives in his car. She doesn't ask him where he was, they just simply make up and go into the house. They immediately go to sleep and Shelley is awakened by a beep from Gulliver's phone. When she checks his messages, Shelley finds a nude picture sent by the woman from the previous night. Realizing that he cheated on her, Shelley leaves the house immediately. Angered, she reports him to the civilian police, who later come into the house and confiscate all his electronic devices, discovering pictures of the torture. They also take Gulliver with them, who has lost the words to explain to his father about what he did. Gant, Gulliver, Tate, and Quile are subsequently being interrogated by the Royal Military Police. Quile states that he wasn't in any of the pictures, thus proving he isn't a suspect. The rest are not yet arrested and get released for the time being. At the military camp, Gulliver and Tate are walking together when Gulliver says that since they're not held in custody, they can still serve and maybe all of it will be forgotten. Quile calls the two of them and asks if they said anything about him to which they reply saying they mentioned nothing. Quili assures them that nobody cares about them, that if they kill an enemy, they would barely get any recognition but one mishap on their side will land them on the news. Meanwhile, Gant explains to his superior officer that he was not present when the abuse and torture was happening and only arrived at the end of it. Furthermore, Gant states that he stopped the soldiers right away and the pictures taken of him were at that moment. The superior officer informs him that no charges have been made yet and dismisses him until they make a decision. 
the superior officers have a discussion alone, with Major Gilchrist being one of them. One states that Gant is lying about the part he played, but their superior says that Gant is already preparing a not guilty plea by blaming a senior officer for turning a blind eye, who is Gilchrist. But Gilchrist insists that he didn't turn a blind eye or a deaf ear because he simply wasn't aware, and otherwise, he would have begun an immediate inquiry. When the other senior officer says they can't just let 28 deaths slide, Gilchrist states that they need Gant in the army, as he has a medal for gallantry and is a very popular guy, and if they lose him, then the morale of this regiment would suffer. With that, the superior officer decides to put the blame all on the two privates Tate and Gulliver, hoping they plead guilty. Gant is fined while the two privates are court-martialed. Upon hearing this, Tate kills himself. In the final scene of the film, we see Gulliver's trial as he pleads guilty to all charges, but rather than solely taking the blame, he tells the court what Gant, Queeley, and the other soldiers did. When Gulliver is returned to his cell, he is beaten by Queeley and other soldiers. The movie ends when Gulliver is then put in prison. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.